Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to all of the outstanding witnesses. It really was great testimony. I agree with the ranking member. Um, Mr. Holdhusen, thank you especially for being here on behalf of our bill, um, for your incredible testimony. But first, let me say thank you for the incredible work of the Good Samaritan Society in North Dakota, South Dakota, throughout the Midwest. As you know, I am very familiar with your facilities and many of your residents over the years, and I appreciate your, your good work. And getting to the point of this, Bill, I appreciate very much that you uh, referenced in your testimony the fact that the score came back as a net gain, if you will, for, for the taxpayers. But even at that, even with our sort of static scoring system in, in uh, Congress, I don't think it adequately captures in what, in my mind, is real, the real cost-benefit analysis. Anytime we provide greater access, to wh whether it's through critical access hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, um, you know, home health care, the use of technology to increase access certainly is good for the, p for the residents and the patient, certainly, you know, helpful to those that are providing it. But I think sometimes we don't adequately address or, or speak of the other benefits of, of that to not just to, to the residents and the health care provider, but to the taxpayers. C is there, is there a c any type of an example you could think of that, that, I, where I could, that I could use as a cost-benefit analysis where perhaps access to the technology provides somebody the opportunity, whether it's in preventative, uh, a preventative measure or maybe a, an emergency that's captured that, that wouldn't otherwise be addressed? Um, because I, I just think there's a lot more to this story even than, than we know today. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, indeed, there are, there are many stories, uh, even beyond anecdotal, and we're beginning to amass uh, empirical data that uh, identifies that. I can give you one very concrete example, and that is with what we call our Living Well at Home program. Mm. Uh, it allows a couple of major objectives. One is, and most importantly, it's patient or individual-centric. It allows individuals to stay in their living environment independently for as long as possible. It's a motion sensor technology that uh, captures different data points and sends it through broadband, why, which is why this bill is important. And it goes to an, uh, a place where in a remote location where the preconditions can be identified and identify uh, things that will, from a practical point of view, begin to bend the cost curve, eliminate or reduce the number of emergency room visits, uh, eliminate rehospitalizations, which are very, very costly to the system. In addition, kind of the social benefits beyond that is it provides not only the independent uh, opportunity to be independent for much longer, but also security of families. We can live states away, mm -hmm. rely on technology to, uh, uh, to follow as a consumer, my mother who now lives three states away, and identify um, uh, many things that are going on in her particular life. So there's social aspects. In particular, we look at the, the, the individual centric to allow individuals to stay in their homes much longer, and then the cost savings associated with um, identifying preconditions which avoid those hospitalization gets in front of the health conditions prior to the time that they actually exist and then begin to cost the, the care system much more money. Mr. Chairman, I will not run the risk of screwing up a really good answer, so I'll yield back the balance <laughs> of my time.